white hot atmosphere in a packed St Andrews filled to capacity. A year ago, David Holdsworth took the fashion of the playoffs a little too far and got himself sent off as the Blues went out to ultimate Wembley winners, Watford. Trevor Francis hopes this Birmingham side can take at least one more step this season. Despite suffering injury setbacks during the past week, losing Gary Hyde and Simon Charlton. The good news for him is that Martin Granger's fit to start, having missed the last two matches with a knee injury. A minor surprise, the inclusion of young striker Andy Johnson at the expense of Dila Adebola. Craig Hignett scored a late winner from the penalty spot when Barnsley beat Birmingham in November. It was one of three penalties in a more than creditable output of 19 goals. Dave Bassett suffered a late blow to his plans when John Curtis, the defender on loan from Manchester United, tweaked to hamstring. His absence presents a chance to the recent recruit Keith Brown from Blackburn. The quartet, who were rested with minor knocks last week, Kevin Miller, Neil Shipperley, Steve Chettle and Eric Tinkler, are all restored. Today's ref, Mark Halsey, took control of last season's first division final at Wembley. Uh, two months ago, Barnsley came here and Birmingham beat them uh, comprehensively. But as Dave Bassett has said in the build-up to this game, every day produces a different match. And Ron Atkinson alongside me, love them or hate them, Ron, the playoffs certainly evoke a lot of atmosphere. Yeah, well, certainly on today, you've got a club like Birmingham who were, who were there last year, didn't quite make it. They tasted the disappointment from last season and uh, I'm sure Trevor Francis will have reminded them how badly they felt after that particular game. Barnsley on the other hand, of course, fairly fresh from the uh, Premiership. A lot of the players tasted it for the first time and they'll want more of it. And they've already got an injury to Robin van der Laan, who looks to me as though he's in trouble already. I mean, that's literally the first incident of the match. And uh, Mick Tommy, the Barnsley physio, has come out to speak with Robin van der Laan and uh, already they're calling, I think, for a stretcher here, which is a desperate start for Barnsley. Well, I think we can see this one again in a moment. And uh, Robin van der Laan, who's only just won a place back in the starting lineup, he hasn't had many starts this season. In the first 10 seconds of the game, has gone down with nobody anywhere near him. It's tense to suggest the way the physio's treating him, whether, whether in fact he's pulled a calf muscle or something, or even something more serious, whether he's twisted an ankle or a knee. But it looks as if the, the physio's working on his calf. Well, the one thing that Dave Bassett does have is plenty of experience on the bench, and it would be an irony, certainly, if Van der Laan had to give way to Jeff Thomas, a man who's suffered so many injury agonies himself over the years. He'd be the logical replacement. Yeah, and it looks very much straight away that whether that's, whether that's something, whether they've, they've sussed out very quickly how badly injured Van der Laan is, or whether it's an injury that he's been carrying and it's gone on him quickly. There's no question that Thomas is coming straight on. Well, it is all about a squad game these days, and you do need 16 experienced players, and uh, nobody more experienced than former international England international Jeff Thomas, so he didn't expect to get the call this early. No, and he, he missed, he's missed the, the biggest bulk of the last couple of seasons, and <laughs> virtually he's got the whole of the 90 minutes to play. to make his mark for the first time really here this season at uh, St Andrews where they've been crippled with injury problems throughout the campaign so there have been a lot of opportunities uh, on offer Hughes one of the more constant players to the one who's played most matches of all Rowett intelligent ball down the line from Rowett and certainly waited until extra artillery has arrived in there but uh, the flow is going to take the ball down what's the word about the playoff system uh, Ron they've decided this year to go for extra time and penalties rather than away goals counting double they do keep changing the rules of these competitions don't they yeah I mean I'm not altogether okay with the, old, with the away goals situation it, you know, I, 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 I prefer the one that's coming to play 
the other thing that Dave Bassett's been saying before the match is he thinks that there should be uh, some form of advantage given to the team that finishes higher in the table. For example, Ipswich Town, he thinks, should go straight to Wembley to play the winners of the other three. Yeah, I mean, there's always... I can remember many years ago, I think, uh, I think Alden finished about seven or eight points clear of Leeds and ten. So it's it's ten that what it was, not he? They got by them in the last kick of the match, and you thought then should there be a seeding situation. I'm not so sure you can have that, you know. And what the, the more you look at it, you know the ground conditions before you start. If you're in that four, you know what they are. And I, I, it would be hard to sort of favour anybody in a playoff competition. Yeah, good for debate, isn't it? Tinkler now, the South African. For the Welshman Barnard, who will shortly be playing against uh, Brazil in less than two weeks' time for his country. As the game develops, I think you're going to see the likes of Barnard and the likes of Hughes for Birmingham get on the ball more, but at the moment it's all very frantic. It's been thrown forward very, very quickly. Not many passes being strung together. Well, they are trying to string a few together now. It's Thomas to Brown and then to Barnard. Well, a little bit rushed, but it breaks for Neil Shipley, whose shot is good, and his shot is so good it's got into the Birmingham net. Beautifully taken goal from Neil Shipley, which really sums up the confident mood he's in at the moment. Well, that's ironic. That is probably the first time either side strung any passes together. Bit of clumsy defending, and then nobody's moved out at all to, to throw Shipley down. He's hit it extremely well, just off the inside of the post. But I thought there was a bit of a slow reaction from the defenders following Percy's mistake. Shipley's 15th. He had a... Here's a Johnson at the other end, but the ball is claimed by Miller. Yeah, Shipley has uh, only scored one in the last five games, having scored six in the previous eight, uh, but he's had a really good second half to the season, and he's a big favourite of Dave Bassett's. He had him, of course, at Crystal Palace and at Forest. That's right, yeah. I mean, in all fairness to the lad, he nothing went right for much at uh, Forest, but uh, he certainly, certainly seems to have come good here. He looked a particularly good player at Southampton. And somewhere along the way it didn't, it went wrong for him. A good clash of bodies there. It's, uh, three kicks been awarded to Birmingham City. Uh, Darren Purse voted Birmingham City's Young Player of the Year. I think Trevor will be very unhappy about the way there was a very slow reaction to. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Purse's where the ball bounced off Purse. I think you know they expected somebody to have reacted much quicker to the situation. We should just have been talking about the away goals rule. I mean, that one only counts as one goal, but not as two in the eventuality of a draw. But it's important for Barnsley to have struck that decisive blow. And the game needed a goal, and it's got one. An early problem for the Blues boss. What he didn't want. Well, it's a long way to go. That's the thing about the two-legged system. A long, long way from home. The ball is slung across in here towards Shipley, who's done well again. Well, the free kick's been awarded against him, but as a centre forward, I think I'd feel pretty aggrieved about that, one on two. Yeah, I think he was unlucky there. He pulled away onto the, onto the left-back Johnson's shoulders. Doesn't look to do much there, apart from holding his strength, and if anything, you could say that Johnson was trying to have a tug at him. But there's a lot of movement down on the Barnsley bench, and I can see that Dyer is stripping for action. Would you think that might be Hignett going on the right-hand side, Tinker coming off? I think it front. is, yeah. Although Dyer has played on the right-hand side, hasn't he? He's better thrusting through the middle. You know, Jeff Thomas Jeff coming Thomas off. Jeff Thomas coming off. Well, isn't <laughs> Substitute for substitute. Well, he did get a knock, didn't he? He went down uh, soon after he'd come on. When you looked at Tinkler, you thought Tinkler's movement didn't look particularly great, and... Well, you'd be a manager. <laughs> you? Uh, looks to me, well, you never know, Dave Bassett's such a wily old bird, he might have thought, hang on a minute, we can go on and win this game with somebody up alongside Shipley there, somebody with a bit of pace like Dyer, we can get a bit of a goal or two more. But, uh, Jeff Thomas looks as though he's might be having a bit of treatment. Anyway, let's see what happens here with Hughes going forward. Johnson, with a toe poke from him, and the free kick on the edge of the area is conceded by Brown. He wasn't in a dangerous position at all, uh, Johnson, when he played the ball. 
No, he's cut across him, though. It's, it's a little bit of shrewd play there by Hughes. But he's cut across him, and Brown's committed for him going on the outside. Now, Birmingham have got to make something happen here. They've got to put it at least in the zone and make either make the keeper work or do something that gets the crowd lifted. Because at the moment, good crowd, enthusiastic crowd, but little or nothing to cheer about. Miller looks a little exposed somehow on his line there. I think he should have a go at him here. I think he should just shoot at the goalie and either, either for a rebound. It's Granger and the shot. Oh, they didn't get anything that Ron Atkinson was talking about there. Those are the really frustrating free kicks, aren't they? Yeah, and what happens, of course, is the, the crowds tend to get a little bit anxious and down. Well, I mean, still looking for that break in the penalty area. They might get it here. It was Darren Purse who squeezed the shot out of the situation and forced the corner. And exactly it's happened as the volume's turned up and it's really by a fluke corner. But you have to scrap for everything and that's what Purse did there. So Rowick's going to arrow this one across towards Purse, Holdsworth and Furlong, I imagine. All jostling for position. Like a tag match there between Johnson and Dyer. Flat. Oh, there might be a shooting opportunity for Hughes. Oh, what a cracking save because it must have been difficult to see that shot from Brian Hughes. Miller's reaction's excellent. It's still in the danger zone. And there was a foul there yes, on Shipley. Tugged at the shirt. Great shot from Hughes. Wonderful reactionary save from Miller. Great shot. I mean, we're sat directly behind it. As soon as he let that one go, I thought, that's in. I thought, no way in the world. That's. Great body shape, keeps his foot over, keeps over the ball, and the keeper could hardly have seen that till the last minute. That's a great save. It's a very important ten minutes of in the dressing room, and uh, that was an important turn away from trouble by Purse, but they're putting themselves under unnecessary pressure. Dyer's won it. Appleby will play it left for Barnard. The first time cross from him. Might just get to Shipley, and it's a corner, but why did they throw themselves into difficulties there? I think that's nerves. I think Rowett, who's been a very accomplished performer all season, looks round, he sees Perth three yards up him and hurries the ball to him, and Perth had a problem. That routine again, and it's the in-swinger. Good punch out, but it might yet fall for Appleby. Then for Shipley, and uh, Appleby is caught here by uh, Granger, and the referee has awarded Barnsley a free kick just outside the area. The irony of all this is, you know, the ball's bouncing up. I think he's a bit unlucky to concede that free kick. The linesman's flagged for offside there. Yeah, it was just the disconcerting bounce of the ball there, but now Hignett's quite capable of curling these in. Or oh, they could square it for Appleby. John, I've had a theory about these free kicks for years now. When I was in management, always employed it. I always put so many on the line, and I'll tell you what, the success rate is far higher. I mean, that, Hignett will look at that. He'll see a space to Mio's right hand side and think there's a chance here. Yep. It was. He's going to have to try again. Neither played off. Now it is Appleby. Barnsley still have the possession and they still have time. Uh, we're inside these final three minutes and coming here behind the keeper, Mira, was Dyer and nobody got a touch. Well, did they? Yes, they did. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. The linesman is, what, 70 yards away. The referee is 10, and the linesman gives the decision. Now, whether the line, linesman's right or wrong, the referee should, must be taking the onus there. Can Barnsley get a second goal here before the break? They've given themselves a chance, a shooting opportunity for Nicky Eden. He's still bobbling around in here now with Dyer. Didn't break for Chettle, does break for Barnard, and surely Birmingham have to clear this. Oh, that was uh, oh, mayhem inside there, and a Barnsley man has gone down writhing in agony. It's Morgan. And the referee might just have to take some action here before half time. I think he thinks Michael Johnson, I'm sure he thinks it's Michael Johnson, who has reacted over vigorously. Grange is the one round. No, that's a legitimate, he's entitled to challenge for that. Birmingham are hanging on, aren't they? They're on the ropes in these closing minutes of the first half. They're having a nightmare. It's your, it's, your, it's your worst nightmare as a manager. Trevor Francis got them to the playoffs last year. He's, he's put an awful lot into this, thinking what, what might happen. And at the moment, it's the worst possible scenario. Your team is not performing. 
for a decisive moment. It's through, and it's well held by Thomas Mira. But, uh, that's what you like to see as a manager, your player striking a free kick and actually getting it passed off through the wall and making the keeper make the save. Well, referee Halsey blows the whistle, it's half-time at St Andrews and it's all going very well indeed for Barnsley so far thanks to that Neil Shipley goal and there's no doubt about it, they have bossed the first half. Half-time score, Birmingham City nil, Barnsley won. So it's a reshaped Birmingham City that Trevor Francis has sent uh, for the second half and he really is going for it with Marcelo and Undlevon. Person Andy Johnson off. So Barnsley might have a bit more to contend with, Ron, than they did in the first half. Yeah, it looks very much as if he's going to play three central defenders. Rowett pushing in alongside Johnson and uh, Holdsworth. And then he's going to be saying to uh, Lazaridis, get yourself forward as much as possible. He's still keeping Granger by the look of it over on the, uh, on the right hand side. The only thing that the Kings have said to Peter Unlove is you play as a free spirit. Personally, I played to play Unlove as a winger. Kept the whip. I was, I was prefer him on the wide area. Well, Lazaridis, of course, plays wide down the left hand side. I know you're a big fan of Unlove, so uh, the man who got that hat trick for Coventry at Liverpool. So that he could play, he's, he's capable of playing in the highest level with anybody. He's had his problems here injury-wise, of course, as most of the players have. First thing Miller has to do in his half is clear it, and what he's done is put it straight into the fans. Now Barnsley started the first half really well, so uh, they'll want to uh, start the second half just as well. Here's Marcelo into the area, down he goes, referee says play on, nothing doing for the Brazilian. Another poor clearance from Miller, though, gifting the ball back to Birmingham straight away. Holdsworth clipped it in, and now Granger, and the first time up to Martin Granger. You know, I've just seen they've been back on the field two minutes. There's been more life and zest from the Birmingham side than the whole of the first half, I would guess. They're playing a shape now with three narrow midfield players in there. Here's the one who's looking for a penalty. So I hit my dogs hard and they, they don't go down. I'm sorry. Dave Bassett's out now trying to adjust his team tactically. To compensate for the changes Birmingham made. Well, that's what makes uh, management a difficult job it is, isn't it? Reacting to opposition tactics. They can certainly make uh, Dave Bassett think his problem is this one is played back for Mira. His problem is he's already got two substitutes out there. And here's an audacious attempt from Neil Shipley. Well, he got the direction well. That would have been great points at Twickenham, wouldn't it? Well, Marks, I mean, he's seen, he knows the keeper's away off his line. He's trying to catch the kid by surprise. No, I think Dave Bassett can virtually stick to his, the way he's played. And Dyer now is through the middle after the result of that header. He's still in here, Dyer, and he's finished the job. And that is awful defending from Birmingham. Barnsley do not care. The fans behind the goal ecstatic. And Bruce Dyer sent on as a first-half substitute has guaranteed a second goal for Burnsley. What a gamble to pay off. Well, first and foremost, I mean, it, it was terribly untidy. Much slack marking from the Birmingham defenders. Not only that, they have a chance here. Holzer's got a great chance here to see the thing out. He's trying to let the thing run on. And all of a sudden, Dyer finds himself with the ball back at his feet again. So Barnsley, two goals to the good, and marauding and looking for a third here as Johnson heads the ball straight to Eden. It's back in the danger area, and they've got bodies around. It's Barnard. That's the other number 11, Unlove, who comes away with it. And loses it. And wins it back. Oh. That was an interesting little phase, and he's gone on. He's ridden the challenge as well. This is what Ron Atkins have wanted to see in the first half, I suspect. Excellent play. Unlove to O'Connor. And, oh, that's a curious one because Hughes is in an ideal position edge of the area to have a pop-up goal and the free kick's been given Why didn't he play an advantage there? It's from Granger and uh, it is uh, an effort off the mark this time Fair long up there but uh, the header not on the mark at all never looked like being over 
That was Hignett. Uh, he didn't mind taking the ball to wide areas. And he's done well to get the throw in out of it. Yeah, both, both, both wide players or players that can play wide, they're unlocked. He made the run one way and caused problems. And Hignett, another one of the best players uh, that's on view, does exactly the same. I think you'll find that the quality players will come to the top now. As the game starts to get a bit spaced out and there's more room and the, a lot of the frantic challenges seem to disappear. You'll see the quality players come to the floor. It's, That's a, there. it's a lovely ball. Dyer can make it three. He's made it three and Barnsley might just be on their way to Wembley. They've never been there, but they've forced themselves a three-goal advantage in the away leg against Birmingham City. 3-0, stunning scoreline. Birmingham nil, Barnsley three. Well, it's a lovely threaded ball in there from Tinkler. He takes it very, very well. Slots it home once again. Where are the three? Are they three statues at the back? But good touch. They're looking for an offside. Nobody takes the responsibility of seeing the challenge off, marking him up. He's not offside. He's moved as the ball's being played through. His first touch is good. Gives the keeper no chance. Birmingham's fans are streaming out of the ground immediately opposite me. I believe their side is already beaten, but uh, here's the ball inside the area. Dyer's through again here. He's on a hat-trick now. A man who's had a stop-start season, but he's certainly going for it today. And it's Dyer terrorising them. And he might cross it for Shipley here. Oh, oh, a hands on. I'll tell you what, Michael Johnson was an inch off pulling, tripping him in the penalty box then, Dyer. But I've seen Dyer in the past with various clubs when he has been on form and he is strong and he can take people on and now all of a sudden he's playing on adrenaline now. I'll tell you what, I bet Dave Bassett does wish it was away goals double now. We've got another free kick of Barnsley, rallies on Dyer and Dyer and Shipley have just been too hot to handle for them. Too strong for the def they've worn the defenders down, which is strange because Birmingham have got good solid defenders normally, but the defenders haven't come to the front today at all. They've been they've been rolled over to the second in aerial challenges. We're going to see Dyer. Oh no, offside. But uh, again, you've got to say about that Birmingham defence that they were caught cold and they could have got the fourth goal. Well, I don't think I don't think that the, the, the first defenders were aware of it. Birmingham, the bars have just been brighter and more inventive. But uh, Connor now slides it. There's a chance this time. It's Andlove into the Barnsley area. And, uh, the covering is excellent from Chettle. Yeah, he's done well, uh, Chettle, and blocked the cross off. But that's where Andlove for me should operate out in the wide areas and just keep giving him the ball. goalkeeper can come to it'll break for Granger who scoops in a shot inches too high he's got a feeling nothing's quite happening for Birmingham no I mean obviously when things go against your confidence goes down and things like that and what you think uh, we're not getting any breaks a lot of it's you're just that much, much off the pace Hughes maybe he can find some quality there in company with Lazaridis Still Lazaridis, they shouldn't let him run too far. He can punish them. He nearly did. Fine stop by Miller. But Lazaridis, who is very left-footed, weaved his way into position for the shot and hit it well. Yeah, they're pushing him in Phil, which is the norm. But he full marks for Stan Lazaridis here. Gets a good curl on it. That's another good save. Miller hasn't had a lot to do, but what he's done, he's done well. Two good saves, a few good takes from crosses. Lazaridis' his only goal here this season was on the first day of the season. He thought then he'd be figuring in a playoff. Here's a Rowett corner, and Miller punches under pressure. By the way, I saw that particular goal. It was a cracker. Free kick at the end, they're attacking now. It's full. Well, hope springs eternal for Birmingham. Just one goal. Can make it look a little better. Well, still looking for that break, which has been so elusive. 
Away goes Dyer once more. Shipley's in space across on the right, so is Hignett. If he times this, they're in real trouble. It's Hignett who can finish it. He has finished it. It's four for Barnsley. Surely they're on their way now. Birmingham cannot believe it. I think Trevor's looking for an offside there, but I'd be very surprised if it was an offside. The curly ball in from uh, Dyer. Very, very close call, but the flag stayed down, and, and it's prodded in past the keeper. I think, I think Ignace made distances there, though. I mean, once again, they've let him run on, and he's, he, I think he's made distances there. Uh, there's no cooler finisher, and it's goal number 20 of Craig Hignett's season, and surely he'll believe that he's on his way to Wembley. A man alone with his thoughts there. Just thinking his big problem, we are talking before the game, would be would they be able to score enough goals? Just thinking he's probably the greatest goal scorer Birmingham's ever had. Yeah, he looked a bit out there. Marcelo with a flicked header. I'll tell you what now, you get all the viewers on about what about Joe Bradford in <laughs> I was gonna say, did you do many of his games? <laughs> That's maybe Bradford back to wrong, but not Joe Bradford, no. Okay, so here we go then. Closing stages at St Andrews and uh, Thomas Meir has got the ball up onto Granger's head. And a bowl is up there for it. Barnsley just need to defend in depth again now. That's exactly what they've done. Appleby uh, back there. They've done well, like the midfield have just checked in towards the back four. And there hasn't been a lot of space for the Birmingham team to play in. Miller actually made his best save in the first half from uh, Hughes, didn't he? Yeah, that was another big moment in the game. As I said, I thought the second the second goal was the, the massive moment in the game, but that was a big turning point, the save that he made from Hughes, because it was a great strike and a super save. Morgan there to meet it. Shipley defending as all strikers have to do now, and then Dyer one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. I actually am a bit surprised Dave Bassett hasn't bought one of his strikers up now and kept him fresh for the rest of the game. Uh, contrasting emotions here at St Andrews. Bruce Dyer's two second half goals and one from uh, Craig Hignett added to Neil Shipley's first half strike. Give a sweet sound to the scoreline. It's a resounding success far beyond Barnsley's wildest dreams. They have one foot in Wembley. Well, they have a date with Birmingham at Oakwell to come on Thursday night. Final score, Birmingham City nil, Barnsley 4. Well, it puts us in a good position. Uh, them away goals, I hope that's not going to have any effect. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pleased with the result, obviously. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, and, uh, you know, no way in my wildest dreams did I think, uh, you know, we'd get away with a scoreline here at Birmingham, because, I mean, they've only conceded 16 goals at home all season, but uh, we had to overcome, you know, some early problems with Robbie van der Laan going off, and then Jeff Thomas having to go off, and, uh, you know, very pleased with the boys today. They, you know, they played very well, professional, and nice, committed performance. Ultimately, it would seem that those early substitutions worked in your favour. Well, who knows? I mean, I didn't want them. I mean, when Robbie was off straight away and then Jeff Thomas, you know, you find yourself uh, on the back foot because uh, Birmingham are a side that, uh, you know, are strong at corners and free kicks and you've got to be able to defend those and uh, sometimes out of consideration. But I thought overall our football was uh, of some good standard today at times. You won 4-0, which would indicate you were the better side. Did you think that in a footballing sense you, you, you definitely were a class above? Oh, it's easy not to say a class above. I thought we played well. I thought we moved the ball well. I thought they started quite brightly, but I thought a lot of times after that, you know, we showed some good play and we settled down and didn't get embroiled in sort of a physical battle, which, you know, basically was what I thought Birmingham were trying to do to start with. Neil, is there a feeling in the dressing room that that's it? Uh, we're very happy. I mean, obviously, uh, we've, we've got to do, uh, do a job on Thursday, but uh, we're very confident now. But that job perhaps isn't as hard as you thought it might be. Well, we certainly surprised a few people today. I mean, uh, our tactics worked. We knew exactly what to do. We, uh, we were looking sharp all, uh, all week. So, uh, really, it's no surprise that we've obviously we're well happy at that. Were you surprised at the way Birmingham approached the game? Well, really, I mean, I think they, they set out OK. I mean, uh, we rattled them early doors. And then I think once we got the first goal, you know, it lifted us, us a bit. And then uh, we rattled them more. And then I think every chance we had, we, we slotted away.
it was important that first goal because all of a sudden the atmosphere from the home side was suddenly dulled. We knew it was going to be intimidating. I mean, uh, obviously we didn't realise we'd scored that early, but uh, we thought if we kept the crowd quiet, we'd have a chance. So uh, it was even better to get a goal early. Well, David, uh, not surprisingly, no Birmingham City interviews. Uh, the dressing room door was apparently locked for a good time afterwards. Now, Harry said, uh, Dave Bassett said, puts us in a good position. That's the understatement <laughs> of the year, isn't it? It's over. I would certainly think so. Uh, I don't think Barnsley have let in four goals at Oakwell uh, this season. So it's going to be a, a massive task for Birmingham to, to get back on level terms. It's always important to get that first goal, isn't it? They had a perfect start. Goal from Neil Shipley, very underrated. In fact, Ron Atkinson sold him... Uh, when he was at Nottingham Forest, he actually sold him to Dave Bassett. That's right, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Dave's bought him on a, a couple of occasions and, uh, yeah, came up today with the opening goal, uh, which was a good finish, in off the post. And, uh, yeah, I'd be delighted with that. Mm. Only 1-0 when Kevin Mal Miller made a save that in its way was just as important. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, as he comes through a crowd of people and, yeah, he can't see too much of it and he, he's turned it away to safety. More importantly, he hasn't gone back into the crowd. Now, it must be great uh, to have men like Bruce Dyer on the bench because uh, he makes two substitutions, but Bruce Dyer comes on, perfect, uh, perfect start for him, obviously. Definitely. I mean, uh, as you see, strength comes through, uh, sticks it away, very calm. That's uh, very bad defending, though. It is. It? it is bad defending. I mean, obviously, I mean, that's probably the reason why Trevor didn't come out and give an interview. Uh, he can't be happy with his defence on, on two of Dyer's goals there. But it was a very positive selection by Dave Bassett because he had Mike Sharon on the bench as well and he didn't have a goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, they went out to win the game. Uh, obviously, Dave there been a, a little bit quiet about his tactics. I think the double substitution worked well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, went, they went there to, to get points. You know what I mean? It's, it's, they needed to win the game. And, uh, I mean, in the wildest dreams, I mean, 4-0 uh, would have probably been miles away. You can't keep Craig Hignett out of the action, though, where Barnsley's <laughs> concerned, can you? No, no, Craig's been good uh, all season, really. I mean, I think that's his 20th goal. Uh, I mean, he, he's scored some important goals for him, and again, a great, a great move for Barnsley uh, there, and slots it away, beats the keeper at the far post there. Now, you played with and under Trevor Francis. Is there anything, do you think, that he can do to try and turn this round now, 4-0 down? Uh, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, I think, uh, I think the tie's safe in Barnsley's hands now. Uh, I think they could be on their way to Wembley, uh, a first visit, and uh, I wish them all the best at it, yeah. I Trevor, mean, Trevor could be under pressure, though, couldn't he, now? Uh, I mean, they've been there twice now, right on the verge. Uh, I mean, I know it's not over, but uh, it's looking very, very slim chance for them at the moment, so... Yeah, he could be under a little bit of pressure, but he's, he's gave it two good goals. Mm.